Okay, let's get into the components and the functions of Wireless Workbench software. So, when we boot this up for the first time, what we're gonna see is this add new device window. So this is just gonna allow you to add some stuff in quickly uh, in order to get an offline coordination going if you haven't got any online devices available. So the first thing that I wanna point out about this window is obviously we have Shure devices at the top here, but you can also see we offer profiles for third party wireless devices. Now the reason that we do this is because on modern shows, it's likely that you're gonna see a mix of different things, especially if you're kind of at the entry level, if you're doing things in small churches or schools or things like that, you're gonna have a mixed inventory of all sorts of stuff. And the same is true also for big shows as well, you know, where you've got lots of different bands coming in, lots of different wireless devices. And in order to get a solid coordination for those, we need to factor those in. So the way that we deal with this is we physically get the equipment into our um, lab in Chicago and we test it, we understand it, we see how linear these devices are, we see how robust they are, and we build profiles for them. There are options that we will get into later for creating your own device profile, but be careful with that because it is possible to make a profile for a device that is not suitable and it will allow you to get too many devices in and you could run into problems when you start trying to deploy those on a show. So especially if you're just starting out with wireless workbench I would recommend just using the profiles that we give you there's a lot in here that is going to be really useful and it will get you a good clean coordination for your um, systems we're going to look at the add new device um, window in a bit more detail later but for the time being I'm just going to close this out so we have a completely blank workspace in front of us now to go through so Wireless Workbench basically splits into three different parts or three different components. We have this inventory window here. This is where we will manage offline and online devices. So when I add these in, when we start plugging devices in, they will appear in this window. Um, I can sort through them in various different ways, by model, by channel name. I can group them in various different ways if I have RF zones, which we'll look at later, or different networks, I can do it in that way as well. And this is going to allow me to do really basic functions like name the devices and name the channels, add some basic IR presets in here. IR presets are things that when we sync our transmitters, we send over to them like gain information and low cuts and things of that nature. If we're not using wireless workbench to do that, I would have to physically go to the front panel of the device and put those settings in, uh, which is fine for a small show, but if you're managing a larger number of channels, this is a much, much speedier, more reliable, more consistent workflow to be using to do it in a, a workspace like this. I can do this for individual devices. I can also select many devices and send information to them in bulk as well. My second component, my second window is this frequency coordination window. So this is sometimes described as a sandbox. So this is where we are going to put some scan data in. We can scan on any uh, Shure device with an RJ45 port upwards, SLXD upwards. Um, I can then bring my inventory into this window and start to generate a frequency coordination based on that scan information. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of things going on in this window. This is kind of the bread and butter of wireless workbench. This is where you're going to spend most of your time. Um, just to break some of these areas down, we won't go into detail now, but for the intermediate and advanced sessions, we certainly will do. Um, we have scan sources on the top left hand side. So these are places where I can bring scan data into Wireless Workbench. This could be hardware. This could also be a scan file that already exists on my machine as well. We can get it in there through that. Going next along, this is the uh, kind of frequency coordination workspace. This is going to display the scan. This is also going to display where I'm putting my frequencies as well. So I can see visually what's going on in my environment and I can see visually where I'm planning to put stuff later on. On the right hand side, we have a number of plot view tools. So in terms of this frequency plot in the middle, I can set a start and an end uh, frequency, which is gonna allow me to zoom in on certain TV channels if that's what I wanna do. Scan peak and exclusion threshold come into play once we start having scan data in here. And essentially, these two lines, this orange line and this red line, is gonna impact which areas of the spectrum I am able to coordinate in and which areas of the spectrum I need to be worried about. And if there are devices online, Line, this scan peak threshold is going to become very useful in terms of identifying those problem devices and then managing them later. That's something we'll look at in the uh, upcoming sessions. 
Um, this window, once you start putting stuff in, it can get quite busy. So I can choose to view certain things. I can choose to view exclusions, user groups, inclusion groups, band overlays, things of that nature. All of that will come uh, a little bit more clear as we get further into the session. Um, my markers are the frequencies that I'm planning to use. So when I start to generate a frequency coordination, we'll see a number of white lines appear in here and I can choose to view those or not view them depending on if I, what I'm doing in that workspace at the time, what I'm looking at, what I need to get clarity over. Um, we can add plot labels in here as well, TV channels, DAB channels, and I can view intermodulation products. So these are the harmonic frequencies generated by two devices being online and interacting with each other. We'll break down intermodulation a bit later on in the session, but it's good to know that we have tools to view these things, to not view these things. We can make this really busy. We can tidy it up depending on what we're doing. So coming to the bottom here, uh, we've got our inventory window here. This is basically gonna be either a mirror of what's in our inventory tab. So once we start to import these devices in, they will appear here uh, in a specific order as well. The order that these devices appear is the order that Workbench is gonna start trying to calculate frequencies in. So that becomes quite important when we're looking at more complex coordinations. I can also add kind of phantom devices, or I sometimes refer to them as super offline devices, using this request additional frequencies um, component in the bottom right hand side. So phantom devices, super offline devices, what does that mean? The best way to think about this is if I bring anything into my inventory tab, be it an online or an offline device, and then I import it into my frequency coordination, Workbench is optimizing that workflow so that when I start to deploy this to hardware, the right frequencies are gonna find the right devices super, super easily uh, without us having to do too much whatsoever. If I bring any frequencies in in this bottom right hand side, my thought process for this is that it is not gonna go to a device that is online. So why would we need to use that? Surely the purpose is to get everything onto a device. Well, it's super useful if you're gonna experiment. So quite often when we're dealing with complex shows, we will get a scan, we'll get some frequencies that we're allowed to use. And before we get to site, before we start thinking too much about how we're gonna name the inventory, we just wanna know physically how many channels could we get operating within that space. And it's much, much quicker to do that experimentation in this section and add it into the coordination here because we can bring lots of frequencies in very, very quickly. We can remove frequencies very quickly rather than trying to build it in the inventory and then import it. But I would always, always recommend if your plan is to get um, information to hardware eventually, the best workflow to use is bring it into this inventory window and then import it into your frequency coordination because you optimize the wireless workbench workflow. So that is our frequency coordination window. There's other buttons at the top and the bottom that we'll get into a bit later once we get hardware online. The last tool that wireless workbench has for us is a monitor. So this is a blank screen at the moment. Again, if I had devices online, I'd be able to bring um, essentially a mirror view of the front panel of this device into this window. So if I am running my wireless workbench remotely away from my receiver rack or I need to get this information somewhere else, I can populate this screen with the information on the front of these devices and I can view it very, very quickly. I can also view this as a timeline as well. So all of that telemetry data that's coming in, the received signal strength indicator, the audio that's coming in, uh, the link quality, if we're using Axiom Digital, things like that can be viewed over time. And there are other tools within Wireless Workbench uh, to monitor over time, to record telemetry over the time, which we'll get into a little bit later on. This monitor will display IEM transmitters. This monitor will display uh, wireless microphone systems. It will also allow us to view spectrum managers and battery chargers as well. And I can divide things into different tabs at the bottom here. So I can create different views, different tabs, depending on what my show requirements are. So that is the basic tool set of Wireless Workbench. What I wanna do now is look at how we would create a um, a really basic coordination for a small show. So this will be a small community performance, a small church, a small school maybe doing some theater or something of that nature. We're gonna just look at four channels, get them in here, get them named and get some really good coordination stuff going and get it deployed out to our hardware.